Today, I wanna to make a small UX improvement to the Mirage REPL. And this right here is a Mirage REPL. And what this does is this allows you to run a Mirage server in the browser. So you can see over here, we have our Mirage server. We've, we're creating two users, Ryan and Sam. And over in the database, uh, we can see that Ryan is ID one. So if we send a get request to users one, we're gonna get back the JSON payload for Ryan. Now, one of the really cool things about this REPL is that it lets you edit the config. So we can come over here and we can create a third user, uh, Alice. And now over in the database, we'll see Alice's ID three. So if we do a get request to user three, we see Alice's JSON. Now you may have noticed that when I was adding Alice, let's go back and delete this. Uh, as I'm typing, this red box flashes in and out of the bottom left-hand side of the screen. And what this is, is this is an error message telling you uh, we couldn't compile the server because there was a syntax error. Now this error message is really helpful if you happen to uh, put a bad server into this error. It's gonna let you know that we're unable to run it, but it's not that helpful as you're typing. And that's the change that we want to make to uh, this REPL today is we're not gonna show these error messages while the user's typing. We're gonna wait till they're done typing uh, to show them. So let's, uh, let's just clean this up and let's take a look at the code. So this is a component for that REPL page and this is a really big component. It's about 500 or so lines of code, but for today, all that we're interested in is this SRC doc variable. The way that we run this REPL, the way that we run this config that you type in over here, is we take all this JavaScript and we put it into an iframe. And this SRC doc represents the code that we're gonna execute in the iframe. In fact, if we look for where this SRC doc is used, we see this inspector sandbox component and we can open that up. And this sandbox component is just an iframe it has all the attributes that we need to uh, safely run user-generated JavaScript uh, that won't conflict with the rest of our page. And so for today, we wanna to take this REPL and we want to avoid rendering this iframe, avoid rendering this SRC doc while the user is typing. Because chances are if they're typing, the document's invalid, the source is invalid, and there's no point in trying to render it or trying to show them error messages from it. So one way we can do that is by using a debounced value. And so what that would look like is we could say, let debounced src doc equals used debounced src doc. And this used debounced hook doesn't exist yet. It's what we're gonna write today. But the idea is, is this will be a value that doesn't change while the user's typing. So let's just get this wired up. Uh, go back to our iframe and instead of rendering the src doc we are going to re render that debounced src doc and then up here uh, let's make a little room let's hide our jsx and let's start working on that hook so use debounce is going to take a value and just to get us started we are going to return that value and so if we save all this our REPL should still work we shouldn't have broken anything, so let's just verify that. See, I've got two users. Uh, let's do a get request to user two. Okay, everything looks good. I see Sam's JSON payload here. So let's start flushing out this hook. The idea is we want to uh, return a value that doesn't change while the user is typing. And so in order to do this, we're gonna need a new piece of state we will call it the debounced value and we'll create our setter as well. And this is gonna be state that we seed off the original value. And then we're gonna return uh, that, that state, that debounced value. Now we need a way to update this debounced value. We need a way to detect when the user is done typing, uh, we wanna update the debounced value. We wanna call the setter here. And it's really hard to know when the user is done typing. Uh, unfortunately, there's no API for that, but we can approximate it by looking at this value that's passed into this hook. And if we go say 
500 milliseconds and that value hasn't changed, we can assume that the user is done typing. You know, just think about it. If the value is changing every 100 milliseconds, well, the user is probably typing. And a way we can monitor when this value here is changing is with use effect. And so we can write an effect that depends on value. So this effect is going to run every time value changes. And we can have this effect kick off a set timeout. And that set timeout is going to call our setter. So we'll call set to bounce value with the latest value. And we're going to delay that timeout by 500 milliseconds. So if we look at our hook right now, we are taking a value and then we are kicking off an effect to change that value in 500 milliseconds from now. Now, the real magic for this hook is going to come in when we look at use effects cleanup function. And what that is, is that's going to be a function that we can return that runs every time this effect needs to rerun itself. And we are going to use the clear timeout function to cancel our timeout that we called up here. And this takes a timeout ID, which we'll have to assign. And this hook right here is now enough to get us a debounced value. And we can visualize this with uh, some console logs. So let's add a log here. We'll say setting the value. And then add another one down here. And we'll say uh, clearing the timeout. And then over in our REPL, let's clear this. And you can see that as we type, we are just constantly clearing the timeout. But if I take my hands off the keyboard for 500 milliseconds, then that set goes through. And so this is a really nice way to delay showing that error message, to delay doing anything until the user is done typing. So let's uh, clean up these logs. And one small change I want to make here is I want to make this timeout configurable. So I'm going to allow uh, users of this hook to pass in a timeout. And instead of just defaulting to 500 milliseconds, we'll use timeout. And then our effect is also going to depend on that timeout. And then up here, let's use 500 milliseconds. That might be a little too long, but for the sake of this video, it, it really highlights the point of waiting for the user to finish typing. Okay, so now back in the config, I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to make a little more room. Clear my console. And let's go ahead and add Alice. And so now as I'm typing, I don't see any error messages. Pretty cool. And then if I do happen to make a syntax error, well, I do see it. And I do see it pretty quickly. So this is a nice small DX improvement. I also found it interesting how um, we use a hook to debounce the reading side of the value rather than the um, setting side of the value. So I thought this was a, a pretty cool thing about React hooks that I wanted to share. So hopefully you found this helpful and I will link the source code for this hook down below.